Right. So, this week, a uh, couple of things. <clears throat> One, I need to actually correct everything from last week. Turns out Bob Ross is only on Mondays. It's not going to be an actual marathon thing. Just a little addendum to last week. Still means that, you know, every other time the wrestling's on and I'm having to covering it, there'll be a secret second stream somewhere just with happy little trees being painted. That's all that matters. But, for this week, as you can see by the title, it's down there. We're talking about two games. Well, one game which is really good but is suffering from third party issues and one game that's suffering from first party issues so we'll start off with that one um, we'll go in the order of the title so Payday 2 game that came out ooh, somewhere, I think it was 2011 2012 off the top of my head so the idea was the developers overkill basically stressed at the time of making because during the time that this came out it was still a case in a lot of games especially on PC for there to be a lot of uh, downloadable content and mods well not no sorry not mods downloadable content the amount of downloadable content that there is for awesome noughts is ridiculous the downloadable content 14 fortress 2 because of the Steam Marketplace is very huge. And Overkill basically said that uh, there would basically be no microtransactions in their stuff because of the rise of a lot of things like that. Admittedly, as I say, that they have done the awesome noughts path of doing lots of paid DLC, but the thing is, people were paying for characters, which is a bit, you know, murky in the end, but at least it wasn't... <clears throat> trying to sort of force feed you for perks or whatever this then changed um, a few weeks back when they added I think it was during a free weekend or whatever and they added a lot of safes the idea of safes and what it is uh, you could get saves in your drops after you complete a mission but in order to actually unlock those saves you had to pay money in order to do it to get equipment and the thing is the only way to get that equipment at the time was microtransactions cue everybody being rightfully angry at it developers came back and uh, patched it so that there is the likelihood of the drills to get into the safes being dropped. It's not very much, but they try to appease it somehow. They've really now just sort of screwed everything over with what happened this past week. And that they added new weapon skins with upgrades that allow... A boost to XP and a boost to the money you earn in a thing. So, the thing with this that they're trying to say is brilliant is that these effects will be stacking. <clears throat> so, the more players in the squad that with the boosts, that means the more everybody benefits. So, if there's three people that have the boost and one person that doesn't, even the person that doesn't is going to get a boost. But, again, the idea is these weapon skins are only available in-game and rather than as paid DLC sort of thing. So, looking at some of the comments from Reddit, uh, one person said, This is kind of hilarious to me in a strange way. It's like they're trolling their fans. Uh... Other threads on Reddit include uh, FU Overkill 2.0, FU Overkill 2, Team Boost Boogaloo, and RIP This Sub Reddit. 
this has got so bad that the Steam moderation team, the people that moderate the, you know, the the Steam, uh, the Steam part, the, the Steam uh, date, well, not database, the people that moderate the Payday 2 Steam page in terms of the community stuff, they've also quit in protest. <clears throat> With all the bad f feedback and the disappointment in the game that they're having to, you know, be uh, mods to, they basically the three people have just given up. You know, moderator Ashley, not me, uh, wrote apparently, We've recently been under a great deal of stress after the Crime Fest update. This is the update that I told you about with the whole safes thing, which really didn't get well received. And the thing is, these people were getting it in the neck for something that they didn't even do. Uh, a number of death threats thrown at us as well, as much more heavy moderation was needed due to a huge, in huge increase in users breaking the rules. We are not paid and have been in a very stressful situation. If Overkill decides to let us go as moderators, <clears throat> something we're prepared for, I personally cannot sit by when they continue to promote immoral business practices. This is from their mod on the Steam community page. I felt the skin systems needed work but could function. Uh, the recent safe update showed against that. I'm very sorry it's come to this situation, but the stress we've had managed to with, coupled with our unhappiness with the situation, has pushed us to make this choice. So yeah, because uh, it goes through in the story further on uh, Eurogamer, uh, the safes, you could crack them open for random drops of loot, but you needed to buy a drill that cost pound sixty, so basically $2, uh, to open them. They responded by giving players a chance to get a free drill instead, and tried to defend its change by reasoning that it needed more funds to keep supporting Payday 2 two years after launch. Well, the thing is, you've got all the levels that were already in the game, and you've got at least, like, 20 to 30 different levels, characters, and guns on the DLC. Do we really need that many? Oh, we have a partnership with our partner where we have a deal to produce a specific amount of content until 2017. However, we at Overkill wanted to create more than what we and 5 Games agreed on. So they're basically shooting themselves in the foot. Um, we can already see the black market update is working as we intended. Think right now, things are looking pretty great. Really? Considering, you know, the bile that has been put on the fan base and the fact that the user base on that game in terms of... Uh, Steam DB has gone down dramatically since these changes were put in a few months back, or even last month. I think tells you that, that people are probably going to wait until they can't monetize it anymore because the deal's finished in terms of the 505 trying to make more money deal. And then they'll play it then and go back to loving it because microtransactions won't be forced down their throats. I don't know, but the biggest one, <clears throat> most notably for the UK, but it has affected uh, the US in a different way, is Fallout 4. <clears throat> Not that it's a bad game, well, the weird thing is, apparently on consoles it's absolutely rubbish, but on PC it's really good, but the people that reviewed the console versions gave it really good reviews, despite the problems. Now, if it was the PC build, it would make sense, because from what I can tell on, on the PC, it pretty much runs steady and there ain't that much frame drop. On the consoles, they can't cope. Which is brilliant. Considering the consoles are supposed to be the same spec as quite a lot of good computers out there right now. Either way, the thing that's come under fire is... Uh, mainly the Pip-Boy edition. So, pre-orders open for it back at E3 when they announced it at the Bethesda press conference. And, understandably, Pip-Boy sold out. Uh, there was like a second wave of pre-orders. They went pretty quick too. And, yeah, 
If you wanted a chance to get a pit boy, your chances were gone. So it then came round to release day, at least in America, because we'll start off with that one because it's easy, and some people weren't getting them. Uh, basically, whatever was happening with the courier system in terms of getting the pit boys out to people, they didn't do it in time. The, despite the fact they knew it was coming out on this day. Quite a lot of people did get it uh, on the day like uh, they were supposed to. But some didn't. They had to wait a few days. But I think everybody's got it. The big kerfuffle has been over here in the UK. So Game is argu arguably the only major high street video game retailer out there now. There are others, but nowhere on the proliferation that Game is. So the fact that Game, uh, a week and a half ago, the Friday before Fallout 4 was coming out, started sending out emails to people saying that their... Pit, their orders were being either cancelled or delayed because uh, of problem with payment issues for the pre-order. And a lot of people were obviously pissed. Game came out with a statement saying, oh, it's just the banks and uh, PayPal haven't been able to communicate with us to get things sorted so we can resolve these issues. Within half an hour of this coming out... Uh, I don't know if it was all the banks, but certainly PayPal came out with a statement and said, Game haven't even got in touch with us about this. If we were told about this, we would have dealt with it quickly. But because we haven't, and this is the first we found of it, we're doing it now, but nobody told us. Then it got to a point that quite a few people have uh, been waiting for their pre-orders and even as of this day quite a few still don't have them because supposedly there's payment issues the real thing that is the kicker though is quite a few game stores across the UK actually on launch night, that people could queue up to get their pre-orders from the store rather than have it delivered to them, quite a few stores actually had Pit Boys available to buy. Despite the fact they were supposed to be sold out and not even available. Another retailer over here, um, Zavi, they all of a sudden on Fallout launch day said, oh, we've got Pit Boys. If all these Pit Boys are suddenly out in the world, despite the fact they were supposed to have been completely sold out from the pre-orders? Why are they even available? And then the added little twist is obviously, people. some people want them. Some people bought probably four of them. And guess what? They're selling them on eBay for about three, four hundred pounds. And the thing is, if, because it's then sent, things are being dispatched in a courier way. As in, throw it in the back of the van and just deal with it. So, some people have been buying these overpriced ones. Because what they're basically selling is just the pit boy. They're not selling the season pass or the, um, the steel case that you get for the game in the thing. They're just selling the actual pit boy with the stand. And these they're paying somewhere in the region of possibly three to four hundred dollars for them. People are getting them out you know, because they can't buy them elsewhere because they're sold out, even though they weren't, clearly, because there were still some additions available to buy on launch day. And these pit boys are falling apart. The workmanship was so good that because it's taken the bash in the back of a van for a couple of days, bits are falling off and hanging off and not working. And It really has been a debacle. 
And the thing is, in that essence, it's game's fault for what's going on with the whole purchases not being taken because it clearly isn't PayPal's fault because they pretty much said in their statement, you know, it's nothing to do with them because they weren't even made aware of this fact. Mainly because it's happened with game quite a few times before. And it's the, all the retailers' fault because if the Pit Boy Special Edition is supposed to be only available to pre-orders and all of a sudden you go, oh, if you want to walk into the shop or go onto our website, limited stock is available of something that supposedly is sold out. So I bet people feel really pleased now. And then thirdly, of course, Bethesda. This is arguably just as bad as the Arkham Knight thing. With the Arkham Knight thing, they didn't even send out the Batmobiles because apparently it was falling apart like supposedly some of these people are paying over the top for their pit boys and getting them in a bad condition. I would say that there was going to be an update on this, but apparently nobody is wanting to reply to comments. Because all that's more important now is Star Wars Battlefront. Because that's the big new game. And then of course it will just be Rainbow Six Siege and Just Cause 3. And all this I want you to forget about. But it's not putting them in a good light. Any of these people. You know, Overkill, Game, Bethesda. All the people that made the stuff of Bethesda, but then again, it is Bethesda because they hired them to do the thing. Zavi, oh, you know, it's it's a mess. I would say it's going to be fixed, but let's be honest, it probably isn't. It really probably isn't. Oh. Anyway, next week, we're going to be doing a preview of... Uh, Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. Uh, they've just announced all the nominations for that and the public vote stuff. So I'll run through that, give you my opinions, you know, and tell you what's nominated uh, and what you can and can't vote on because some of the categories are fan orientated, some of them aren't. But uh, yes, it's. The Game Awards looks interesting. And the thing is, the two biggest contenders for the game of the year probably shouldn't be game of the year one of which i've sort of already hinted at in this episode which gives you a clue as to what that one is the other one i've ranted about for a while the one that should win i've loved for ages and hopefully it's going to be my campaign i guess to get that game to be game of the year and not the other two for its very many, 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 many issues. Anyway, that's me done for this week. I'll catch you next time.